The Little Rock Nine is a group of nine black students who enrolled at the formerly all-white Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas in September of 1957. Their attendance at school was to test a Brown versus the Board of Education that had declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, you can find more content like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on my Patreon page, my Buy Me Coffee, in the description below. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and support the YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's get started. May 17, 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka. The Supreme Court ruled that segregation in United States public schools was unconstitutional. Until that decision, many states across the nation had laws making segregation mandatory, requiring African-Americans and white children to attend separate schools. Resistance to the ruling was so widespread that the court had to issue a second decision in 1955 known as Brown II, ordering school districts to integrate with deliberate speed. In response to the Brown decision and pressure from the local chapter of the NAACP, the Little Rock, Arkansas School Board adopted a plan for gradual integration of its schools. The first institution that would be integrated would be the high schools beginning in September of 1957. Among them was Little Rock Central High School. Despite heavy opposition, nine black students registered to be the first African Americans to attend Central High School. Minnie Jean Brown, Elizabeth Eckford, Ernest Green, Thelma Mothershit, Melba Plateau, Gloria Ray, Terrence Roberts, Jefferson Thomas, and Carlotta Walls. These nine black students became the center of the struggle for desegregation of public schools in the United States. Before enrolling in Little Rock Central High School, the Arkansas NAACP carefully vetted the group of students and determined that they all possessed the strength and determination necessary to face the resistance that they would inevitably encounter. In the weeks prior to the start of the new school year, the students participated in extensive counseling sessions guiding them to what to expect once classes began and how to respond to anticipated hostility. September 2nd, 1957, Governor Orville Flavis announced that he would call the National Guard to prevent students from entry into the high school, claiming that the action was for the students' own protection, stating that they were there to maintain and restore order. In a television address, Flavis insisted that violence and bloodshed would break out if the nine black students were allowed to enter the school. September 3rd, though, federal judge Ron Davies issued a ruling that desegregation would continue as planned on the next day, the first day of the school year. September 4, 1957, the first day of school at Central High, eight students gathered together by Daisy Bates, president of the Arkansas chapter of the NAACP. But the Elizabeth Exford's family did not have a telephone, and no one could reach her to let her know that the carpool plans or the arrangement to gather at 16th Street entrance with several local ministers accompanying them. So Elizabeth Exford arrived alone on the other side of the block, with 270 soldiers from the Arkansas National Guard ordered to prevent any of the Little Rock nine from entering the doors of central high what happened next continues to be one of the enduring images from the incident with effort walking alone stoically approaching the school as a crowd of hostile screaming white students and adults surrounded her effort later recalled that they moved closer and closer and somebody started yelling and i tried to see a friendly face in the crowd to see someone that could help me and i looked into the face of an old woman and she seemed to have a kind face but when i looked at her again she spit on me. The image was printed across the United States, bringing international attention to Arkansas's opposition to integration and their intention to defy the federal order requiring desegregation. Television and newspaper reports devoted substantial coverage to the Little Rock Nine. More than two weeks would go by before the Little Rock Nine would again attempt to enter Central High School. During that time, the nine students stayed home and federal judge Ron Davies would begin legal proceedings against Governor Flavis. President Dwight Eisenhower would attempt to try to persuade Flavis to remove the National Guard and let the Little Rock Nine enter the school. Judge Davies ordered the Guard removed on September 20th and the Little Rock Police Department took over maintaining order. The Little Rock Police escorted the nine students into a side door of the school on September 3rd and an angry mob of some thousand protesters gathered outside. Amidst the ensuing riot and fearing for the lives of the nine students, school officials sent the teens home. They managed to attend class for just three hours. The following day, Woodrow Wilson Mann, mayor of Little Rock, asked President Eisenhower to send federal troops to enforce integration and protect the nine students. Eisenhower would invoke the Insurrection Act of 1807 to enable troops to perform domestic law enforcement. The president ordered the 101 Airborne Division of the United States Army, without their black soldiers, by the way, to Little Rock and federalize the entire Arkansas National Guard, removing them from the governor's control. The Little Rock Nine attended school on their first full 
school day, September 25th, 1957. The rest of the school year, the Little Rock Nine would be under the protection of the one-on-one Airborne and later the Arkansas National Guard. They were still subjected to physical and verbal abuse by the white students. Melba Patillo later recalled having acid thrown in her eyes and another incident in which a group of girls trapped her in a stall of the women's bathroom and attempted to burn her by dropping pieces of flaming paper on her from above. The nine students were told that they would have to take a lot and were warned not to fight back if anything were to happen. So when Minnie Jean Brown was taunted by a group of white males in December 1957 in the school cafeteria during lunch, she dropped a bowl of chili on one of the boys and was suspended for six days. After another confrontation, she was expelled. Brown would transfer to New Lincoln High School in New York and the eight remaining students, however, would attend school for the rest of the academic school year. After the end of the year in 1958, senior Ernest Green would become the first African-American to graduate from Little Rock Central High School. In September of 1958, as the school year was drawn to a close, Governor Flavis decided to petition the decision by the federal district court in order to postpone desegregation of public schools in Little Rock. In the case of Cooper versus Aaron, the Little Rock School District fought to delay desegregation for two and a half years. This meant that black students wouldn't be permitted to enter public high schools until January in 1961. Governor Flavis argued that schools remain integrated that it would increase the violence. However, in August of 1958, federal courts ruled against the delay on desegregation, so Flavis called an emergency extraordinary session of the state legislature in order to enact his new segregation bills. Claiming that Arkansas had to assert their rights and freedoms against the federal decision, in September 1958, Governor Flavis signed acts enabling him to close all the high schools in the Little Rock School District. Thus, Monday, September 15th, Governor Flavis ordered the closure of all public high schools, preventing both black and white students from attending in school in Little Rock. Despite the bill, the city's population had a chance to stop the school closures because it necessitated a referendum. The referendum would either condone or condemn the closure of the schools. However, a week before the referendum, Flavis addressed the citizens of Little Rock in an attempt to secure their votes. He urged the population to vote against integration because he had plans on leasing the public high schools to private schools, therefore would continue to educate black and white students separately. Flavis' appeal was successful and the referendum won, and this period in Little Rock is known as the lost year. Flavis' victory led to a series of consequences that rippled through Little Rock. Flavis and the school board intention on opening private schools was blocked by an injunction by the 8th District Court of Appeals, which caused citizens of Little Rock to take their anger out on the black community. White Little Rock's community blamed the black community for the closure of the schools and made them a target for hate crimes. President of the Arkansas branch of the NAACP, Daisy Bates, was the primary victim of these crimes. Her involvement in the Little Rock Nine resulted in the loss of advertising revenue for her paper, the Arkansas State Press, and forced it to close in 1959, leading to Daisy Bates moving to New York in 1960. May of 1959, the school board fired 44 teachers and administrative staff from the closed high schools, leading to three segregationist board members being replaced with three moderate ones. The new members reinstated the fired staff and attempted to reopen schools, much to the dismay of Governor Flavis. High schools reopened August 12, 1959. Although the lost year was over and black students returned to now integrated high schools, but they weren't welcomed by the other students. Black students still had a difficult time getting past white mobs entering the school and once inside they were often subject to physical and emotional abuse. The lost year would be used as a pretext for a new brand of hatred towards black students in Little Rock high schools. The Little Rock Nine is widely recognized for the significant role in the civil rights movement. Little Rock Central High School still functions under the Little Rock School District. It's now a historical site that houses a civil rights museum to commemorate the events of the Little Rock Nine. Also, Daisy Bates' home was designated a National Historical Landmark in 2001 for her role in the events. In 1999, President Bill Clinton honored the Little Rock Nine when he presented them with the Congressional Gold Medal, which is the highest civilian honor bestowed by Congress and is given to those who provided outstanding service to this country. Thank you. I'm Country Boy, and this has been Little Rock Nine. If you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at onemichistory.com. Also, if you like to support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee on my Patreon page in the description below. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and support the YouTube channel. Peace.